One more introduction I'm going to make, but I'll save that for just a minute. And uh, our earnings report was put out yesterday. Uh, the, as we regularly explain, the realized investment gains or losses in any period really mean nothing. I mean, they, uh, we could take a lot of gains if we wanted to, we could take a lot of losses if we wanted to, but we don't really think about the timing of what we do at all, except in relation to the intrinsic value of what we're buying or selling. We are not, we do not make earnings forecasts, and uh, we have, on March 31st, we have over $90 billion of net unrealized gains. So if we wanted to report almost any number you can think of and count capital gains as part of the earnings, uh, we could do it. And so in the first quarter, and I would say that we have a very, very, very slight preference this year if everything else were equal. Uh, well, it's true in any year, but it's a little more so this year. We, we would rather take losses than gains because uh, of the tax effect if, if two securities were equally valued. And there's probably just one touch more of emphasis on that this year because we're, uh, we are taxed on gains at 35 percent, which means we also get the benefit, the tax benefit of 35 percent of any losses we take. And I would say that there's some chance of that rate being lower, meaning that losses would have less tax value to us after this year than they would have this, uh, after this year than this year. Uh, that is not a big deal, but it would be a very slight preference, and it may get to be more of a factor in deferring any gains and perhaps accelerating any losses as the year gets closer uh, to December 31st, assuming, and I'm making no predictions about it, but assuming that there were to be a tax act that had the effect of reducing the earnings. So in the first quarter, uh, insurance underwriting was the swing factor, and then uh, the, there's a lot more about this in our 10Q, which you can look up on the internet. And you really, if you're, if you're seriously interested in evaluating our earnings or our businesses, uh, you should go to the uh, uh, 10Q because uh, the summer report, as we point out every quarter, does not really get to the main, a number of the main points of valuation. I would just mention two factors in connection with the insurance situation, which I love. Uh, in the first four months, not the first three months, but the first four months, Geico has had a net gain of 700,000 policyholders, and that's the highest number I can remember. There may have been a figure larger than that somewhere in the past. I'm not, I did not go back and look at it the mall. But last year, I believe that figure was like 300,000. And this has been a wonderful period for us at GEICO because several of our major competitors have decided, and they, they publicly stated this. In fact, one of them just reiterated it the other day, although they've now changed their policy. But they, they, they intentionally cut back on new business because new business uh, carries with it a significant uh, loss in the first year. There's just costs of acquiring new business. Plus the loss ratio, strangely enough, on first year business uh, tends to run almost 10 points higher than on renewal business. And uh, so not only do you have acquisition costs, but you actually have a higher loss ratio. So when you write a lot of new business, you're going to lose money on that portion of the business that year. And uh, we wrote a lot of new business, and at least two of our competitors announced that they were lightening up for a while on new business because they did not want to pay the penalty of, of the first year loss. And of course, that's made to order for us, so we just, we just put our foot to the floor and, and try to write as much business, good business as we can, and, and there are costs to that. A second factor, uh, well, it's not a factor in the PL, but uh, an important event in the first quarter is that we increased our float, and on the slide, I believe it shows it year over year, 16 billion. 14 billion of that came in the first quarter of this year, so we, we, uh, we had a $14 billion increase in float. And for some years, I've been telling you it's going to be hard to increase the float at all, 
and I still will study the same thing, but it's nice to have $14 billion or more, uh, which is one reason if you look at our 10Q, you will see that our cash and cash equivalents, including Treasury bills, uh, now has come to well over $90 billion. So I think uh, I feel very good about the first quarter, even though our operating earnings were down a little. But one quarter means nothing. I mean, over time, what really counts is whether we're building the value of the businesses that we own. And, and I'm always interested in the current figures, but I'm always dreaming about the, about the future figures.